Hello everyone. Before I get going on today's challenge, I just want to explain what Kylie and I have got planned for the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, for the rest of the year going forward. We have decided to go for a more structured approach and let me just explain what that means. Now, instead of doing a weekly prompt, we're just going to have a monthly prompt and that will be released in week one. It can be interpreted in any way you like. You could do a journal page, an artist trading card, a tag, a collage, a camera verse and embellishment. Um, feel free to interpret it in any way you like. The challenge for week two will be recycle, repurpose, reuse or use your scraps. Um, now you could use the contents of your Flourish journal that some of us created in January or you could use other supplies that you've collected along the way. Let me just show you my Flourish journal for, for those of you that haven't seen it. The Flourish journal is just um, a folder full of scraps and junk. It's just a good way to to organise your supplies. I absolutely love mine and I wish I'd done it years ago. I'm finding this so inspiring and much easier to use. So I'll leave the link to the video showing how I made mine in the description box below. So as I say, if you want to use the contents of your Flourish journal or other scraps that you've collected um, along the way, that is your choice to do so. Now, if you want to use the prompt that we set in week one to inspire you, feel free to do so, but it is not um, a requirement. The challenge for week three of the month is let's get arty. We want to encourage you to dig out your art supplies, um, be it acrylic paints or gouache or watercolours, um, chalk, stencils, stamps, um, coloured pencils, modelling paste, embossing powder, wax, all of that kind of goodness that I think a lot of us um, who have been um, swept along with the collage theme that you know is all the rage at the moment, we've discarded our art supplies and I certainly want to start digging mine out again. And I know that Kylie, um, you know, is very artistic and uses hers a lot anyway. So week three, let's get arty. Then week four, the challenge is let's journal. We want to encourage you to do at least one journal page a month and let's start filling these wonderful journals that we've created in January. Now, week five on the odd occasion where it's um, a five week month, it will be a wild card and we'll explore more about that as we go along. Now I want to do a bouquet or bokeh background today and all that means is that it's a soft um, blurred out of focus type of background. Um, you often see it in photographs where you get the little um, circles of light in the background. I'm going to start off with the lightest colour first so that's the speckled egg so I'm just going to apply some of this um, to the top of my card and just blend blend that in. Um, and the idea is just to keep developing the colour. I just absolutely love this speckled egg. It's beautiful. Now, I do want to be heavier on the right hand side than the left. And so I'm just going to bring bring it down more on this side just because I want it to have some interest and I like that look. Now, I do find that these brushes are much easier to blend than the blending sponges, um, but you do find that you'll get um, a heavier layer with these uh, with the sponges. So, you know, use whatever suits you. And it may well be that I use this as well um, just to get um, a depth of colour um, at the top and then coming down softer as we um, get to the centre. Still want it um, a bit heavier on this side here. So I'm just going to play around with this and that will do for the time being. Then I'm bringing in um, a piece of cardstock. Mine just happens to be craft. It really doesn't matter what colour. And that's just to stop me getting my, my hands um, in the layer that I've already got down. And then I'm going with the darker colour on the opposite side. And I'm just going to add some of the seedless preserves. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm just going to try and um, build up layers of this gorgeous colour. This is such a rich colour. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what it is with me at the moment, but I'm really into sort of, you know, pinks and purples and nice, bright, cheerful um, colours. Um, not so much the vintage um, at the moment, although I think colours do work well with vintage colours as well. And we can bring this up the sides as well to meet that, um, that duck egg colour. Just like this, I want it heavier at the bottom. So again, if I want to use my blending sponge, which will give me a heavier coverage, I can do that and then just blend it, blend it out with the with the brush. I find that the two 
work really well um, together and in harmony with them um, with one another. Then, now that we've got rid of most of that colour, I want to add some of the Victorian velvet. And because these colours are in the same colour family, I'm not bothering to change my brush. I don't need to. It's not going to contaminate my, my pad. And I want to use that to fill um, the rest the rest of that, that area. Try and blend that in with the grey. And then I think I'll bring in some more, more of that grey here as well. I'm just trying to blend these colours together really, really nicely. So I'm just going to keep playing at this um, until I've got a really nice blend of all those three colours. And you'll see that I'm going backwards and forwards between the three colours here, just so that um, they blend together um, seamlessly. And then back in with the speckled egg again, just over that pink. And that's how you create a really seamless um, blend. I'm happy with that now. Now the next colour I want to add is some of the shaded lilac. So I'm just going to load up my brush and I just want some of that just around the edges and, um, and at the top, just to add a bit of balance. We've got the speckled egg in the centre, which is, which is lighter. So this is just a shade darker again. I just really like the way that um, that, that looks. We can bring a bit um, down the side as well so that we've got um, a touch of that in the other colours as well. Let's do the same down this side here and just try and blend that out. And then you might think I'm completely stark raving mad, but I'm then going to add a bit of black soot just for um, a little bit um, of drama. Let's just try and build up a bit more of that, um, that shaded lilac. I like how, how that looks. Maybe we could even have a bit of the... Um, the seedless preserve at the top here as well. I like I like that. And then let's bring in the Distress Oxide in Black Soot for some real drama. I'm going to start off at the bottom. Um, I don't want too much to start off with and I'm just going to add it around the edges and just try and bring that into the centre. And I just love the way that it's uh, it's darker at the at the edges and just getting lighter into the centre. I just think that adds a real dramatic um, look. And then when we start adding our bouquet as well, um, it'll look even more dramatic. Just be careful that you don't go um, to the edge of your card. Did you see that line that I had? It's just where I'd caught it um, on the side side here. You don't want that, but it's really easy to blend it out. I think that will that will do and then we'll do the same at the top as well. Try and use what we've already got left on the on the brush and just add some of that uh, that black just at the top and the sides here as well. And then I'll show you what this um, this looks like just bringing it down the sides as well and blending it together seamlessly. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that just beautiful? And I think what I want to do then is just come in again with some more of this speckled egg just to blend this area here at the top. Blending it um, into the dark area at the top and into the, the pink below. Perfect. Now this is what a bouquet or bokeh um, background looks like and I've done several videos in the past using this technique. It's so much fun. Um, today though I want to, instead of using circles, I want to do it with hearts to follow this um, this month's um, theme in the group. Now if you don't have any hearts it doesn't matter. Use circles which I know that many more of you will have. You could use um, a circle stencil. This is one that I've got here by Creative Expressions. This is called Bubble burst this is a really inexpensive one um, but you know for all of these I used my own stencils I used punches and just cut um, various sizes of circles out of craft cardstock and that's what I used to create all of these backgrounds um, but today I'm using hearts and I've got three different sizes we've got large medium and small and you can see that I've just cut various sizes of hearts um, out of the cardstock to use for my background 
Now, if you don't have any stamps or stencils or punches, I'm going to show you a really easy way that you can um, create your own. Fold a piece of lightweight cardstock in half and cut your own heart shapes out. So just like we used to do when we were at school. So we'll do this and we can do this in various different, um, different sizes as well. Let's do another one a bit further down, slightly bigger perhaps this time. So we can do this and that's what that looks like. So you could use that as a stencil. And then what you could do is fold the paper um, in again and just create um, a few more. So let's have a look. Let's um, add another heart. And you'll see why it's nice to have them clustered um, in a second, because it just makes what you're doing a little bit um, more, more random. Let's have a tiny one here. And you can fold the other side over and do exactly the same. So that's just an easy way of, of making your own. And it doesn't matter about the folds. I think if I was using this, I would stencil from the back side. Now you'll also need some kind of white um, pigment ink or white acrylic paint or even white gesso to create your bokeh um, effect. I've got two. I've got the Archival Brilliance Pigment Ink Pad in Moonlight White. I've also got the Hero Hues in Unicorn. Um, I'm going to use this one just because this is a brand um, new pad. Um, this one is old and, you know, if it gets a bit contaminated, I'm not too worried about that. I've also got the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Picket Fence. I don't find that this works um, at all so um, I don't know I don't find um, a use for that ink really and I'm going to start off by using this stencil here and I'll, in particular I want to use the larger um, heart stencil now again I've got um, a brush and um, a blending pad I'm going to start off by trying the brush and this is um, a new one that I don't think I've used before. So let's see how this performs. And I want to start off in the right hand corner and I'm just going to add some, add some ink. I need to load this up. This might, might not be um, a strong enough effect. We'll, we'll see. Oh yes, you see that's worked absolutely beautifully. And we can just start adding um, lots of different hearts and as I say I'm just starting off with the larger ones just to start off with so this uh, this this um, brush is working absolutely beautifully I want some to hang off the page as well just so that um, it gives it that more um, random feel let's have one up here and I'm just going to um, apply a few of these all over my background this is what I've got so far. And if some of them um, overlap, that's great. That's exactly um, what you want. So next I'm going to add some of the um, smaller um, smaller hearts. So let's add um, some, of, some of these. We can just add some of the hearts like, like this as well. And if they overlap, that's absolutely perfect. That's brilliant. Don't overthink this. Says she, the woman who overthinks absolutely um, everything. <laughs> but um, yeah, just keep going. Just um, keep adding them in random places and overlapping, as I've said, is, is good. And you want to go heavier with the ink in some of the areas as well. So let me just show you here. So for instance, here, I'm going to go really heavy with the ink, which again sort of adds a really nice contrast. And I'm just going to keep going. And then for the bottom portion of my card, I'm just going to use the smaller hearts. So I'm just going to be really random about this and just keep moving that stencil around, overlapping everything. Some with more pressure um, than others as well. I'm also using the other stencil that I created um, as well, just to give me um, a more random um, appearance of where the parts are positioned. So really trying not to overthink where these go and applying more pressure on some of them as well so that some of them um, are brighter than, than others. Just look how beautiful that's starting to look. 
I absolutely love how this looks, but we could also start to add a bit more interest by adding some of the Victorian violet um, as well and overlapping again some of these hearts. Let's see how that looks. You see, again, it just adds some, some depth. I really like that. We could even try adding some of the seedless um, preserves as well, but just look how pretty that is. Don't overthink where you're putting these, Nina. Just pop pop a few down. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm just going to keep on playing. So here is my finished background. What do you think? I think it's so pretty, absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know me, I could not stop at one. I went on to make um, another one. Um, I changed it up ever so slightly. I did um, iced spruce and shaded lilac at the top of this one here. Absolutely love that. I love the grey tones. And I went more black with the black soot um, at the bottom and the sides. Absolutely love that one. I stuck with the white on this one here. And I did also add some stamping. I used um, a little mini heart stamp that I had, just dipped it um, into the pigment ink and um, dabbed a few of those on as well. I really like that. Um, but, you know, I hope that that's given you some ideas as to, you know, how to make a heart background and in particular um, do it in um, bokeh or bokeh style. Now I'm leaving the video here for today and I will be back with um, a midweek mini and um, once I've had a chance to get my head around what I want to do with these gorgeous backgrounds, I've got so many ideas spinning around in my head. Um, I can't decide and I don't want to screw it up so I'm going to take my time and just ponder on this for the time being. But for anybody that wants to follow along with our weekly challenges, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, in the description box below. So please feel free to come along and join us we're a really fun and friendly group um there are a couple of entry questions that you will need to answer to gain entry and if you don't answer those your request will be automatically declined so please do be um, aware of that and we also insist as well it's our main group rule that you do when you post in the group um state which prompt um your post relates to but apart from that that's it as always, I'll leave the link to Kylie's video in the description box below. So please do go and check and see what she's been up to as no doubt, you know, it will be something completely different to what I've done today. So more inspiration for you. But if you've enjoyed my video today, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below and let me know, you know, which one of these is your favourite, number one or number two. Um, and most importantly, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. And I'll be back um, in a couple of days as I say with a midweek mini um, enjoy the rest of your weekend um, and I'll see you all again soon bye for now